Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book Monster Hunter International by Larry Correa. This is the first book in the Monster Hunter series that he wrote for Bane Books. I have been reading a lot of science fiction and fantasy, particularly from Bane recently, and uh, this is one of their premier uh, science fiction fantasy series that they have, one of their biggest selling, one of their most well-known series. If their big series in the 90s and the early 2000s was the, um, uh, was the, the Honor Harrington series, their big series of the 2010s seems to be Larry Correa's Monster Hunter series. So I uh, had seen this at my local bookstore. I decided to pick it up. I cannot find book two anywhere, Vendetta. Uh, I just I just can't find it anywhere, um, so I'm going to have to buy it online. Um, they have the other books at my local bookstore. I just haven't purchased them yet. But I've been interested in starting it. It's a pretty decent-sized book. It's uh, 700 pages, about 715 pages. Uh, and, uh, of course, in mass market paperback. And uh, this was actually the first book I read in January of this year. Um, uh, and it is, you know, it, so it's a, it's a decent chunker to start January with. And Larry Correa is an incredibly divisive person when you uh, look at things like his Twitter feed. So I encourage you not to look up his Twitter um, uh, because it is very, you know, it will, it will cause you to have some sort of a reaction, good or really good or really bad. Um, anyway, so he's a very divisive figure, but I've been told his writing is still good despite that. And I would say, yes, I think his writing in here is still really entertaining. This is such a fun book. This is such an entertaining read. I was hooked. I was hooked on this book. I read it in two days because I was just so enamored by the story. I really liked it. Um, this book, a lot of people will warn you that this book has a lot of gun talk in it. And, of course, referencing what kind of guns the characters are using as they're hunting the monsters, yeah, that's in there. But I thought it was going to be that he was going to be describing the process of putting the gun together, describing what each of the gears does and what each of the components. Not really. It's actually not that not that in-depth. It's more that whenever he's referencing a gun, like whenever it's like the character shot the gun, it's the character shot this type of gun, and he's trying to be as accurate and as... as as, as clear as possible so that it's like, yeah, this is what they would use and stuff. But the basic premise of the book is that the Monster Hunter um, or international organization is an organization that uh, uh, does government contracts basically to hunt monsters. Uh, these are like vampires or these are werewolves or these are zombies, whatever, whatever the kind of monster that is causing problems because they don't, the, the U.S. government does not want people to know that there are monsters in their world. And so these guys, their job is to hunt these monsters down. Um, uh, if, if Harry Dresden's job is to investigate monsters, uh, uh, Monster Hunter International's job is to hunt down the monsters. And so the... Uh, the, our main character, Owen Z. Pitt, he is hired by Monster Hunter International to, to join their team because he ends up killing a werewolf, kind of by accident. And then they're like, hey, you, you know about werewolves and you apparently know how to kill them. You want to join our team and join our Monster Hunter team? And he's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And the book, it, whoops, and the book is in, uh, incredibly action-packed. There's a lot of great action scenes. There's a training montage where you see him learning how uh, the how to how to fight properly. There's a kind of a romance where he's really interested in the girl, and she's not particularly interested in him. But he never forgets, and he never he never abandons hope, and he's always interested in her. And then of course there's the the other guys who he kind of has like a little bit of a rivalry with Grant, and then there's the guys that he's kind of working with. That it's it's just there's so much enter entertaining moments in this book. Um, and it also has, you know, the, the ending of this book is like, it, it, it delves a little bit into horror, um, but it's, it's really more of a science fiction book, I would say, science fiction fantasy than it is horror. But it delves into the horror elements a little bit with the monsters at the end of the book. But I still thought it was really well done. Um, uh, the way this book handles other species of monsters is really interesting. For example, um, I'm going to 
delve a little, this is, this is not a major spoiler. This is like a slight, you know, world building spoiler. So if you don't want world building spoilers, skip ahead a little bit, but there, when you get to the elves in this book, instead of them being, uh, high elves, like in Tolkien stuff, instead, the elves are basically trailer trash from, from South Alabama. Oh, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. Um, uh, and, and the, the, the characters were very relatable. And then the fact that you have the orcs, oh, the orcs were delightful. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. And that is a genius way to twist, you know, the elves versus the orcs thing. That was, that was a genius twist. So I really enjoyed that. All right. Uh, away from the spoilers. Um, uh, the book, of course, sets up future books in the series, and I'm really interested to read those. I think they're all shorter than this one because it's a long book. Um, uh, but it was, it's just so much fun. It is a fun book. And it, from what I understand that there are like seven books in the Monster Hunter series, and then there's like some collections of short stories. And then you have the adjacent series, which is the Monster Hunter memoirs series, which, uh, Larry Korea uses co-authors with those. So the first three of those, he co-authored books with John Ringo, who I've also read some of John Ringo's novels. And then for the most recent Monster Hunter memoirs, he co-wrote uh, it with Jason Cordova, and I actually have that book. Bain sent me that one to read, and so um, I believe this one's set in like the 1970s. Uh, but so those—that's the Monster Hunter universe, and I'm very interested in reading more Monster Hunter books because this is so much fun, and this is delving into the science fiction, fantasy, horror elements that I don't normally get into, but is just a lot of a lot of fun. And so if you enjoy. Uh, you know, monsters and hunting down monsters and characters using, you know, these guns to destroy the bad guys, you know, you're, you're probably going to have a lot of fun with this book. So that is my review of Monster Hunter International. I give it like a solid eight or eight and a half out of 10. There, there wasn't much I disliked in the book other than the language. I should, I should mention the language, like you'll go like a chapter where there's not really much language. And then all of a sudden there'll be a barrage on a page of a character just swearing profusely. And you're like, where, where did this come from? The last chapter, you, you barely had any swear words at all, if any. And so it was just kind of frustrating that element of it. Um, uh, uh, but other than that, I've, thought that it was a delight I thought it was delightful otherwise I thought it was a lot of fun to read um the world building I thought was on point I thought the world building here was excellent so that's my review of Monster Hunter International and a solid eight and a half out of ten so until next time I'm Jonathan and thank you for watching